Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, welcome to the month of April, and I uh, hope this episode finds you entering into this new month. Uh, Looking forward to this springtime and the summer, and uh, we are looking forward to a new adventure here in the book of Philippians for the month of April. Last month, the month of March, we were in the book of Judges, uh, and today we are picking up in the book of Philippians. And so we'll be in this book for the entire month of April, of course, during the weekdays, Monday through Friday. And so I encourage you to push this out to somebody uh, that you think this might be an encouragement to in whatever venue or whatever uh, um, uh, social media outlet you're listening on, whether it be Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or uh, um, Spotify, whatever it is. Um, I hope that you are encouraged by it and maybe would encourage someone else to jump in with us in this study. The book of Philippians written by Paul, it's one of a number of letters that Paul wrote, but it's one of what we call the prison epistles. Epistles uh, or the letters that Paul wrote from prison. Uh, That would be um, Philippians, Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon. And of course, um, Paul would write this. He was arrested in and taken to Rome. He would write this from the prison cell in Rome to the believers at Philippi, whom he had began a relationship with all the way back in Acts chapter number 16. Um, a number of years earlier, before he actually wrote this letter, you can find Paul receiving the Macedonian call from the Lord in the city of Troas. And Paul would travel, of course, Troas, modern day Turkey. Paul has been on a missionary journey from uh, Antioch to uh, um, Derby and Lystra and Iconium and different places that he traveled, ends up in, in Troas, and uh, the Lord sends him across the water to Philippi and to the area of Macedonia. And Paul would go there. He would meet um, a number of people, one of them being uh, Lydia that we read about, one of them being the Philippian jailer because they got arrested for their faith, put in prison, and uh, then God would work a miracle of Paul and Silas, their chains falling off at night, and the Philippian jailer coming to them and saying, what must I do to believe uh, to be saved? And of course, um, they reach him in his house, and I believe it's in his house that uh, we would see a church started. And Paul would minister to the believers of Philippi for just a very short time, uh, but always have a really um, a great place in his heart for them. And we'll see that even today as we get started. The theme of the book of Philippians, some people think it's joy, other think it's um, uh, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Uh, but I, I believe if you really kind of look at the holistic view of the church, of the book of Philippians, you would see a theme of Paul desiring believers just to grow in the Lord. Hey, keep growing in him. And uh, we'll kind of see that as we go through this book together. So this morning, we're just going to cover the first five verses of this letter from Paul. Uh, to the believers at Philippi. And so let's, uh, let's read this, uh, this first five verses, this introduction, and then we'll grab some thoughts and we'll be done. All right, Philippians chapter one and verse number one, it says this, Paul and Timothy, uh, bond servants or slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are in Philippi with the bishops and the deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. I love how Paul opens this up. Of course, if you've read some of Paul's letters, you know that many of his letters uh, open the same way. But I love in these first few verses, we really can get, can, can gather and, and receive uh, what Paul thought of himself. Um, if you open open these pages, Paul immediately labels himself. Paul and Timothy, what are we? We are the bond servants. We are the servants. We are the slaves of the Lord Jesus Christ. That phrase, bond servant, it means I am bound to serve. You know, Paul was doing, Paul was identifying who he was 
and who he served, what the Lord meant to him. He was saying, "I." he's opening up in humility. I am recognizing that I am nothing. Uh, this is the man that started their church. This is the man whom at this, who at this time, uh, God has already used him to see over a dozen churches begin and start. And so Paul really could have, could have written and, and said, hey, I'm, I am Paul and I'm writing to you as a church planter and a preacher. And he could have given himself a title, uh, but he didn't give himself, he did give himself a title, but not the one we would expect. He said, I am a, I am a bound servant to Jesus Christ. I wonder what is the title that you give to yourself? You know, every day we wake up and we identify ourselves in one way or another. I'm a father. I'm a husband. Today I'm a pastor. I'm a, I, I own a business. Whatever the case may be, um, I, I wonder if we really quickly identify. You know what? I'm a, I'm a bound servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I love Paul's humility here. I love how he identifies himself. But then he also identifies who he's writing to. Verse number two, he says, I'm writing to the saints. I'm writing to the bishops and the deacons, not just the leadership, not just the laity. I'm writing to everybody, to all of you. It shows us Paul's heart for people. And then I see his greeting, verse number two, where he says, grace and peace from God our Father. Uh, to you. This is Paul's request, really just kind of a a generic introduction that he gives. I'm praying for grace and peace in your life for you to know God's favor, for God's rest to be in your life. And really in just these two short verses, we can can find a quick challenge from Paul. We can realize that Paul uh, did not view himself as a celebrity Christian. Um, you know, sometimes we can do that. We can view ourselves as being in need of the attention and what everybody wants to give to us or should give to us. Whereas Paul writes and he says, hey, I am just a servant of the Lord and I care for every child of God. I'm not writing just to the leadership. I'm not writing to just to the people who are maybe seen as lower. No, no, no. We are all servants of God and I'm writing to you in love. I wonder if people would be able to look at the life of Dennis and say, Dennis, we see you as a bound servant of the Lord who just loves people. And when I look at the life of Paul, that's what I see. But then I also discover Paul giving them kind of some praise of some things that he's thankful for. Verse 3, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Uh, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first time until now. You know, when Paul thought of these believers in, uh, um, in Philippi, he, he, he thought of them with a, a heart of gratitude. He looked back at them and he realized that they had I- impacted him. And as he thought of them, it brought joy into his life. And it brought uh, this spirit of thanksgiving into his heart. Well, what's he thankful for? Well, he's thankful for the fellowship and the gospel from the first day until now, for their camaraderie around the faith of Jesus Christ. And you can go and we are going to study the book out. But if you just kind of sat down and did a casual reading of the book of Philippians, you would find that Paul doesn't reprimand these believers very much. He doesn't give them a lot of to-dos. He really just encourages them to keep walking with the Lord in their faith. Uh, you can very quickly gather that Paul looked to these believers as, uh, as a group of people that he truly enjoyed being around, loved the fellowship. Um, I believe the believers at Philippi, I think even the believers at Ephesus, when you go to Acts 20, you can see this from Paul, and he wrote this to them as well. Uh, but what, what I see is just this simple thought that Paul looked at the faith of the believers of the Philippians and he said, man, your faith is encouraging me. You are a blessing. As I think about these introductory verses that Paul gives, really two thoughts come to my mind for us today. The first we mentioned is how Paul viewed himself as a humble servant. But the second is how the Philippians, how they impacted Paul through their fellowship, their encouragement, the joy they brought. And and from that, I kind of walk away with a challenge of, I, I wonder if people, if people look at me and say, you're an encouragement to me. I, I think all of us would like to say that, 
But I wonder, can, can people, <clears throat> like Paul did with the Philippians, can people thank God for their interactions with me because of the encouragement that I am to them? You know, today, as you and I go through the day, if we would view ourselves as just simple servants of the Lord, man, our interactions with people today are going to be an encouragement. God will use you to encourage others as you and I go through the day. And may that be our prayer request. The, the thank, thanksgiving that Paul was giving to the Philippians, may that be the request on our heart. Lord, help me to be like one of these Christians that people look at and say, when I think of you, I have a thankful spirit because you encourage me in the Lord. Today, as you cross paths with people, you never know what people need. You don't know what's going on. I don't know what people are thinking. I don't know the burdens they're carrying. But I do know that God could use me today to be an encouragement to somebody. And so may we have the mindset of Paul and the mindset of the Philippians. May we be a bound servant of the Lord with a desire to encourage anyone God brings across our path. Tomorrow, we'll jump into the next few verses of Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, down through verse, I think verse number 11 is where we're going tomorrow. But have a great day, and let's serve God from a humble heart, and let's encourage others uh, through, that, uh, through that humble heart, through that humility, and watch God use us. Have a good day.